the court. A brutal, beautiful world. It is the realm of two-meter giants and pinpoint setters, of hungry beasts and monstrous talent, of thousands of dreamers, and a handful of victors. After all, the view from the top is a rare sight, even for those born to grace it. In that world of genius and passion, of experience and hunger, of absolutes and certainties, stands a scrawny, anxious boy, watching from the sidelines as he questions his place in this banquet of monsters. He reaches out a nervous hand, grasping for something, anything, yearning to be a part of that brutal yet beautiful world. Alas, he is no genius, he is no monster, he is no freak. Yamaguchi Tarashi is nothing but average. The bright lights overwhelm him, the ecstatic crowd unsettles him, and the tall, towering, ever-present expanse called the net frightens him. Every single day, every single moment sitting on that bench, he thinks, I'm not good enough, I'm worthless, I don't belong here, I will never belong here. And yet, he still wishes to see the view from the top more than anything else. Out of all the characters in Haikyuu, Yamaguchi was the first one I resonated with on a personal level, and his journey was one of the biggest reasons I fell so deeply in love with this story. After all, I've been where he's been. I've felt what he's felt. But it was this seemingly normal guy who I thought would be nothing more than Tsukishima's sidekick. It was him who taught me that you cannot wait for an opportunity to come to you. You cannot sit there and bask in your burdens, expecting things to just work out. You have to forge your own path. Through all the anxiety, all the doubts, all the stress, sometimes all it takes is a little belief in yourself and one deep breath. When Yamaguchi was first introduced, I really wasn't expecting much from him. He was the guy that just followed Tsukishima around, and that's honestly all I thought he would ever be. After all, he had a personality that didn't seem like it would mesh with the other boys. Hinata and Kageyama were these aggressive, passion-filled idiots, Daichi was a firm leader, Sugawara was a calm but reliable voice, Tsukishima was a problem but also stood out in his own way. Yet, Yamaguchi was passive, introverted, scared, and in retrospect, I love that. Not everyone on a sports team should be a meathead or a super genius or even a socially well-rounded person. Especially in a team like Karasuno, which was filled with players aiming for the top, having someone who just joined the club out of love for the sport, someone who just wanted to do something after school, grounds the team in reality. But among hyper-passionate monsters, it's easy to lose yourself. Sometimes they shine so bright, you can't even fathom catching a glimpse of them. You think, how in the world can I catch up to them? Compared to these guys who eat, live, and breathe volleyball, what can I even do? Other times, however, they shine so bright, it makes you want to shine a little brighter yourself. And when you grasp that feeling of frustration, that feeling of wanting to change, one day or another, a ray of hope will come your way. For Yamaguchi, that ray of hope was a little practice match against the Karasuno Neighborhood Association. As he manages the score on the sidelines, now accepting his fate as a bench warmer, there suddenly comes a moment that shines brighter to him than anything he'd seen on the court before. Brighter than the reforged ace Asahi, brighter than the unstoppable guardian Nishinoya, shining brighter than any monster on that court, was a single serve. The Jump Floater It would be a while till that moment ignited something within him. It would be a while till his purpose would become clear to him. But whether he realized it or not, that one serve would change Yamaguchi's life forever.
As the days passed and the rest of the first years flew higher and higher, reaching unimaginable heights, Yamaguchi came to a sad but real understanding. After the intense practice games against Nekoma, just a few days before the Inter High Tournament, Yamaguchi finally realized that he had been left behind. The sad truth was that Yamaguchi had nothing to offer the team. Everything he could do, someone else could do better. Right now, all he could do was helplessly watch from the sidelines as the rest of the first years made it into the starting lineup, leaving him further and further behind. Perhaps at the beginning, he thought they would all be on the bench together, and that's a comforting thought. But to be on the bench all alone? Now that, that is heartbreaking. It's a feeling I know too well, that feeling of complete and utter despair when you realize you're all alone, all the way back at the starting line. You blame the world for its unfairness and pull yourself down for not being as talented as the rest of your peers. And that frustration, that feeling of worthlessness is unbearable. But it's in that darkness, that void of helplessness, that the ray of hope shines the brightest. He may not be able to set like Kageyama, receive like Nishinoya, or spike like Asahi, but there was one play that no one had mastered. The only individual play in volleyball, but a play that required one to overcome the battle against oneself. Frustrated and fed up with himself, Yamaguchi heads over to his local convenience store, whose owner, Makoto Shimada, had previously caught his eye. After all, this was the man who had demonstrated the jump floater serve. And so, Yamaguchi asks Shimada if he can teach him the jump floater. You know, what's really inspiring about this moment is that Yamaguchi could have simply chosen to accept his spot on the bench and forever lament the fact that he would simply never be as good as the others. He could have gone down that path and it would have made him bitter, resentful. Yet, he chose to take a leap of faith. He took a step forward, he took initiative, which in of itself made him a completely different player than he was just a few hours ago. Sure, his reason for taking the step might be trivial, the fact that he didn't want to be the only first year to be left out. But no matter the reason, Yamaguchi wanted to forge his own path. And suddenly, Yamaguchi was the character I was cheering for the most. To me, he was the true underdog of Haikyuu, and I wanted to see his arc, his moment, unfold more than any other character. Can we also take a second to appreciate Shimada? He really didn't have to train Yamaguchi, but he took time out of his nights, gave the boy a space to practice, and I respect that. That night, I think Shimada saw a young boy trying to find his place in the world, trying to find a purpose. That night, I think Shimada saw himself in Yamaguchi. From then on, practicing through the nights, pushing himself every single day, Yamaguchi was on a mission to master the jump floater. However, it was still too soon. After getting no playtime in the entirety of the Inter High Tournament, Yamaguchi is called over by Coach Ukai as a last-minute wildcard against Seijo, who have completely adapted to Karasuno's plays. His first ever official game, and boy was the pressure immense. Final set, Seijo leading 19-16, and the weight of the world on the scrawny young boy's shoulders. Nervous, shaky, and scared out of his mind, it was no surprise that Yamaguchi completely and utterly failed. And man, was that heartbreaking, but genius. The embarrassment, the guilt, the frustration. You can see him go through all of these emotions in a matter of seconds. And it's a moment that would forever be engraved in his memory. After all, in order to reforge yourself, you have to be broken. Thematically, I think it was a genius decision to have Yamaguchi become a serve specialist. 
After all, the serve is the only individual play in volleyball, and Yamaguchi's battle, first and foremost, is with himself. The only way to pull off consistent and deadly serves is confidence, belief in your own abilities, but it's much easier said than done. No matter how much you believe, you just don't master a skill overnight, and that's what's so beautiful and relatable about this character. He fails. He fails miserably and terribly, as we all do at some point in our lives. When you feel like you've achieved nothing in life, when you feel like you've amounted to nothing, it's hard to think you'll ever pull it off. Up until two years ago, that's exactly how I felt. I hadn't mastered anything in my life and I hadn't achieved anything on a level I could be proud of. I was genuinely lost. Just like Yamaguchi though, I had a moment and I decided to start this channel. And you know, when you're putting in that work every single day, when you're desperately trying to make the only thing you have work, that belief arises on its own. That burning feeling of wanting to see all this effort finally be rewarded lights a fire in your heart. I know it's not today, I know it's not tomorrow, but this is all I have, and one day I'm going to nail this serve. And on that day, it'll all be worth it. Throughout the second season, that is exactly what Yamaguchi is in search of, practicing restlessly in the Tokyo training arc and trying to keep up with the rest of his teammates. But still, he's not quite there yet. His recent failure weighed heavily on his mind, and just thinking about experiencing that feeling again frightened him. He needed one final push. In the quarterfinals of the spring qualifiers, as Karasuno faces off against Wakunan, Yamaguchi is called upon once more, and while his skill had drastically improved, his confidence, his belief in himself, was another story. In a moment of panic and stress, of being overwhelmed and scared, Yamaguchi abandons the jump floater and does a normal serve, focusing on getting the ball over the net more than anything else. He had failed. Again. I love this moment because it grounds Yamaguchi's journey in beautiful, beautiful reality. It's only been a few months since his failure against Seijo, and so it makes complete sense for him to freak out on that court again. Sometimes, when the risk seems too high, when previous failures haunt our conscience, we tend to take the easy way out, the safe way out. After all, if I failed once, I'm bound to fail again, right? It's a mindset that's too damn relatable, but one that kills any and all growth. If you never take any risks, if you never take that leap of faith, why the hell are you even on this team? One of my favorite scenes is an absolutely furious coach Ukai shouting Yamaguchi's name as he heads towards him, ready to chastise him for running away. But Ennoshita comes in between them, stopping Ukai and saying, He knows, coach. I think he knows better than anyone else. Yamaguchi tears up in a heartbreaking scene, unable to contain his emotions as he comes face to face with his failures. What matters most is not that he failed, not that he ran away, it's the fact that he knew, he immediately knew, he'd messed up. A dejected yet motivated Yamaguchi runs over to Ukai after the game, apologizing for his mistake and demanding one last chance. One last chance to prove himself. One last chance to grasp that moment. One last chance to forge his own path. Just the conviction in his voice is enough to show us how much he's grown since season one. And man, is that a bone chilling realization. This is not the same boy who watched as his friends passed him by. This is not the same boy who cowered in the fear of challenge. This is the face of a man who wants to see the view from the top. And well, it was about time Yamaguchi joined the Banquet of Monsters himself. In the long-awaited rematch against Aoba Josai, as Karasuno is backed into a corner with seemingly no way out but defeat, we get a moment that I will forever remember as one of the greatest moments in all of sports anime.
the camera slowly revolves around Karasuno's beacon of hope, a young man named Yamaguchi Tadashi, a young man who was nothing more than average. Against the very same team he had failed against, in the very same position he had been in, facing the very same fear he had felt before. Yamaguchi walks onto the court with a look of determination and resolve stronger than ever before. After all, through all the anxiety, all the doubts, all the stress, sometimes all it takes is a little belief in yourself and one deep breath. Rising from the ashes reforged into the hero of Karasuno, Yamaguchi scores 5 points back to back, leveling the score and single-handedly bringing his team back into the game. Looking back, this was the moment that had me hooked on Haikyuu, and the moment that this story became more than just an anime to me. To see a character I related to on such a deep level, to see him grow and change, to see him succeed and win, was powerful, and it meant more to me than I could ever imagine. Truly, Yamaguchi had finally become worthy of standing in the brutal, beautiful world he'd always dreamed of. He'd finally become worthy of standing on the court. And if he can do it, so can you.